You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on forces in two dimensions. The topic of this video is modified Atwood's machines. We wish to understand how do you use a free body diagram and Newton's second law to analyze and solve a modified Atwood's machine problem. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. This is an Atwood's machine. It consists of two masses connected by a string that's stretched over a pulley. It's used to study motion with a uniform acceleration. This is a modified Atwood's machine. It consists of a hanging mass and a second object that's on some elevated surface. That's that second object and the hanging mass are connected by a string that's stretched over a pulley. It too is used to study motion with a uniform acceleration. Here's a typical Atwood's machine problem. A 0.15 kilogram hanging mass is attached to a 0.5 kilogram cart that's on a table. The mass is released and the cart rolls along the frictionless table. Determine the acceleration and the tension in the string. In problems such as this, we typically assume three things about the system. First, that the mass is that the string is massless and as such doesn't contribute to the overall mass of the system. Second, that the pulley is massless and as it spins, it doesn't acquire rotational kinetic energy. And third, that there's no friction in the pulley. While these aren't perfect assumptions, they are pretty good approximations to allow us to use Newton's second law in order to solve modified Atwood's machine problems. In two previous videos, these two, we discussed two body problems and Atwood's machine problems. I've left links to these videos in the description section below if you need to review them. What we learned of in these videos is that there's a basic approach to approaching two body problems that can be used for a modified Atwood's problem. The approach involves two separate analyses, with the first one being a system analysis. In the system analysis, we think of the two objects as being a system that moves together as a single object. The mass of the system is simply the sum of the mass of the two objects. We draw a free body diagram for the system and then apply F net equal MA in order to relate the mass of the objects to the acceleration of the objects. The second analysis is called an individual object analysis. In this analysis, we pick either one of the objects. It doesn't matter which one we pick. We draw a free body diagram for that object and then we use F net equal MA in order to relate the acceleration of the mass to the tension of the string. When we draw our system, we think of the mass on the table, the string, and the hanging mass as being part of one large object the system. And we begin to draw forces upon this one large object, beginning perhaps with a down force of gravity upon the mass on the table and the normal force. These will balance each other because this mass does not accelerate vertically, it accelerates horizontally. We'll draw friction on that mass as well, and for the hanging mass, we'll draw the force of gravity. But what you'll note is missing here is the tension force. We don't draw a tension force for the system because the string is part of the system. Now when we think about this, this is kind of odd because it's a regularly shaped object that even begins to change its shape as it moves. So we make a little mental change here and we begin to think of straightening out the object and making it a linear object instead. The logic goes like this. The string that connects from the hanging mass to the mass on the table is wrapped over a pulley. And what pulleys do is change the direction of a force without changing its magnitude. So the string exerts an up force up on the hanging mass, but a rightward force up on the mass on the table. So one way we can kind of think of this is as an object that's shaped something like that, or a system shaped like that, with the gravity force now changing its direction and being a horizontal force because the pulley's been removed. Well, though we know gravity's not a horizontal force, it's a useful way of picturing this system. And when we do, we sometimes say F net equal the forward force minus the backwards force, which in this situation would be M2G, the force of gravity on the hanging mass, minus F friction, the friction upon the mass on the table. Here's the first of two examples. A 0.15 kilogram hanging mass is attached by a string to a 0.50 kilogram cart that's at rest on a friction-free table. When this mass is released, they both accelerate, and we want to calculate the acceleration and the tension in the string. So step one is to begin with a system analysis. And just as we discussed, I'm going to take this system of cart and hanging mass and string and straighten it out. Then I'm going to draw the forces upon this system. There's the force of gravity upon the cart. It's 
m1 times g, there's the normal force, and that balances the force of gravity. And then finally, there's the force of gravity upon the hanging mass. Because I've straightened out the system due to the pulley, we could call this force of gravity on the hanging mass a horizontal force, and its value is m2g. So now we have three forces, two of them balanced, and one of them is unbalanced. It's the m2g. That's the net force. So I say f net equal m2g. I take my value for mass in 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and I calculate the net force to be 1.47 newtons. Now I know that the total mass is the sum of the mass of the two objects, 0.650 kilograms, and I know the net force. So I can calculate acceleration using Newton's second law, and it comes out to be 2.26 meters per second per second. A system analysis is used to determine the acceleration of the two objects, but an individual object analysis is required in order to determine the tension in the string. When you do this analysis, you pick either one of the objects, and it doesn't matter which one you pick. I'm going to pick the, the cart. The cart's mass is 0.50 kilograms, and I'm going to draw the forces on the cart. There's, first of all, gravity down m1 times g, there's normal force up, and they will balance each other. And finally, there's the string pulling the cart to the right. This is the tension force, what I'm trying to calculate through my individual object analysis. Now I know the mass of this object, and I've calculated the acceleration, so I should be able to find the net force on this cart. I just go its mass, 0.5, times the acceleration I calculated, 2.26 meters per second per second, and I get 1.13 newtons as the net force upon on this cart. Now if you look at the forces there, you'll notice that the up and the down balance each other. It's the tension force that's unbalanced. Thus, it is the net force. So the tension in this problem is 1.13 newtons. In our second example, we have a 0.250 kilogram hanging mass that's attached by a string to a 0.50 kilogram block at rest on the table. The coefficient of friction between the block and the table is 0.215. What we wish to determine is the acceleration of these objects and the tension in the string. And that begins with a system analysis in which I presume these two objects are part of the same system. You'll note that I've drawn the straighten out version of that system. And I've listed the mass of the system. It's the sum of the masses of the two objects, 0 0.750 kilograms. Now I draw forces on my system. There's the gravity upon the block and the normal force on the block, and those two will balance balance each other and be equal to each other. Then there's friction force on the block that heads off to the left because this block's going to move to the right. Friction opposes motion. Now on the other end of the system, there's the force of gravity on the hanging mass, and so it's M2G, and I've drawn it horizontally because of the pulley and the straightening out of our system. Now I can calculate M2G. I know that M2 is 0.250 and G is 9.8, and that comes out to be 2.45 newtons for this force to the right upon our system. As for the force to the left, the friction force, I can calculate that as well using the formula F fricked equal mu F norm. Now as for the normal force, that balances the gravity force of the, of the block. So normal force is M1G, and the friction force would be mu times M1G. I know what M1 is, I know what mu is, and G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, so I substitute and I solve for the friction force. It comes out to be 1.05 newtons. Now watch this. I'm going to look at my free body diagram, and I'm going to notice there's four forces, two balance, leaving the force to the right and the force to the left. This whole system accelerates to the right. And so I say the force in the direction of the acceleration minus the one that opposes it equal F net. F net is equal to M2G minus F fricked, and I know what M2G is and what F fricked is. So I plug in my numbers, and I get 1.40 newtons for F net. I go A equal F net divided by M, and I get the acceleration of 1.86 meters per second per second. Now that I've calculated acceleration, I need to calculate the tension in the string, and that means an individual object analysis. I can pick either object, it doesn't matter which. I'm going to pick the hanging mass. The 0.250 kilogram hanging mass has a down force of gravity on it of M2G and an up force from the string that's pulling on it, F tension. Now I know the down force is bigger than the up force because this is accelerating downwards. So I draw the down arrow bigger, the up arrow smaller. I can calculate the value of the down force 
is 0.250 times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And since I know the mass and acceleration, I can calculate the net force of this object as m2, 0.250, times the acceleration from the first step of the problem. I end up getting 0.466 newtons for the net force. Now watch this. I look at my free body diagram and I say F net equal the force in the direction of the acceleration minus the one that opposes. That is F net equal M2G minus F tension. Now I know the value of F net and I know the value of M2G so I substitute it into my equation and I have to solve for F tension. The way you solve that, prop, that equation for F tension is you add F tension to both sides of the equation and subtract 0.466 from both sides of the equation. Now you pull out your calculator and you find out that the tension force is 1.98 newtons. There is another alternative method of solving these problems, and I'm going to go through it kind of quickly. It's particularly preferred by those who are strong algebra students. So it involves taking two two-body analysis to generate two equations with two unknowns in the equations, A and F tension, and then solving a system of two equations. It might start with the block. We draw the up forces and the down forces. We draw the tension force and the friction force, and then we'd apply F net equal MA to this free body diagram. And when we do, we'd say F net is the forward force minus the backwards force, and then I put M1A for F net, and I put mu M1G for the friction force, and my two unknowns in this equation are A a and F tension, and I know everything else in that equation. I repeat the process for the hanging mass. I draw the down force bigger than the up force, and then I say F net equal MA for F net. It's the down force minus the up force, and that F net value is equal to M2A, and that's equal to M2G minus F tension. Now what we have are two equations, and in those two equations are the same two unknowns, A and F tension, and as I mentioned, if you're a strong algebra student at this point, you know where to take it from here in order to calculate A and tension force. So at this time in every video, I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out with that, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources, each one of which can be found on our website. We have a simulation, we have a review page, and a tutorial page. Any one of these would be good next steps for making the learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.